Hello, hello everybody and uh, welcome to the Chin Up Show. Uh, today we are recording episode 004. Yep, it's the fourth episode of this new Chin Up Show that was just launched uh, a month ago maybe now. And uh, my name is Kenneth Chin, for those of you who don't know, and I warmly welcome all of you. Uh, this show is about updates, uh, about my whereabouts and the whereabouts of the organization, uh, where we're going, where we're coming from, and what God is doing in our lives. I hope to inspire you, uh, inform you, and maybe even involve you in the things that we are doing. So uh, today I want to tell you that my house renovations are doing well. Uh, we started by faith. Um, you know, let me tell you the story very quickly. So, uh, God uh, gave me a house. Uh, it's too long now to tell you the story. I'll tell you probably another time. Uh, but it's a faith house. Uh, I couldn't afford it, not at all. Uh, not even the 2% uh, earnest deposit. But God said to me, I'm going to give you this house and uh, gave me the money for it. Uh, and so, it's, uh, it's really a um, uh, history-making uh, house. Uh, and um, what happened was uh, the Lord also uh, gave me money to renovate. Uh, the first renovation went really, really well. And then I sort of ran out of money uh, and couldn't finish uh, the upstairs um, portion. And so this went on for 10 years. And one day, about uh, two years ago, uh, I was praying in my prayer room and I looked out the window and uh, saw something I've been, well, seeing for the past 10 years. But this time around, uh, the Lord opened my eyes and spoke to my ear and said, um, Kenneth, I want you to finish this. Finish it. And uh, I knew it was going to be expensive, uh, maybe uh, at a minimum of 100,000 ringgit. Uh, but I heard very clearly and I wanted to obey the Lord uh, but, uh, you know, uh, my bank account didn't agree. However, uh, we know that uh, faith doesn't uh, always depend on what you have in your bank account. It depends on what you have in your heart. Uh, and in my heart, I wanted to obey and please God. So um, I started the ball rolling. Uh, I uh, was led to uh, ask the help of uh, an architect in our church whose name is Denzel. <laughs> Actually, his name is Daniel Seilong, uh, but people call him Denzel. And he was just around the corner when I called him and he came over and he uh, heard my, my dream about uh, the, uh, the renovation and he drew something really beautiful uh, for me. And uh, we had it, um, uh, you know, put it into a, a quotation period and uh, it came back that it would cost me uh, nearly 200,000 ringgit to uh, do up the place. So uh, I, it took me two years because I didn't have the money and I just I prayed and prayed and prayed, waited upon the Lord and uh, finally the Lord says, just, just do it, Kenneth. Just tell the contractor you want it done. And so, uh, you know, this is how God works, right? We say, God, you show me the money and, uh, and God will show me where to go. Uh, but God is not like that. He says, you go first and I'll show you the money. Uh, and we will say, no, God, please show first and then I'll go. And then he says, no, go first and then I'll show. And then, you know, we continue to have this back and forth and most of us will end up not doing anything about it because we're so scared, right? And it's natural. Uh, but God said to me, uh, Kenneth, uh, go and I'll show. And he's done this to me so many times. And I've seen him work so many, many times, uh, his miracle. So uh, that's exactly what I did. I uh, told uh, Elder Kenya. Uh, I said, Kenya, uh, you know, let's get on with this. Uh, call the contractor in. Let me talk to him. Let, let's get the job done. Uh, he's agreed to uh, do it in installments for me. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's how it started. And the first 50,000 ringgit check came in. Uh, and uh, it was a miracle. And I was able to pay for uh, the raw materials to start phase one of the place. And then, uh, to cut the long story short, the next 50,000 ringgit came in. Uh, by the grace of God and I was able to do phase two of the place and now we are into phase three uh, and, uh, and I'm trusting the Lord again uh, for you know the, either the next 50 or 100k and I know it's going to come in 
But um, this is a great story, again, uh, of how the Lord is faithful, how He provides. Uh, and uh, the renovation, which I affectionately call the cabin. Yep, the cabin. Uh, the cabin is looking quite good <laughs> in its third phase stage. Uh, and, uh, you know, so far, uh, all the bills have been paid. Uh, the next bill hasn't come in. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Lord said to us not to be anxious, uh, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let all our requests be made known to God. So, uh, it's looking really good. Uh, I, I don't know whether we will have a chance to show you some photos or a video of the latest uh, update of the renovation. But thank you for praying. And uh, to those of you uh, who have asked me, you know, how is it and, and how can you even give, uh, thank you for even offering. Thank you for praying. Uh, it's going to be good and it's going to be a testimony, not just for me, uh, but for all of us and for the kingdom of God. Praise God. Uh, now, uh, there are uh, other things that have happened uh, during uh, the week. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, week, uh, I'm overseas uh, and uh, I'm, uh, you know, uh, celebrating uh, with uh, X uh, Melbourne, uh, their 11th anniversary. Wow, how time flies. And I'm going to give you uh, more on that uh, the next uh, time uh, we meet. Uh, but for now, uh, I am in the midst of, uh, of all this celebration in Australia uh, and uh, I just uh, want you uh, to know that all is well and that we will hear more updates on this next time. All right. Um, the other things I wanted to say to you is that I've had some meetings uh, that were very, really, really good. Uh, the hour of prayer has been going on strong. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, we have uh, the hour of prayer on a Tuesday uh, lunchtime here in Malaysia, 1 to 2 p.m. And people have been coming in, uh, sharing with us their prayer needs for healing, for breakthrough, uh, for salvation of families. Uh, and so we have been praying. And uh, we've had, you know, just scores and scores and scores of testimonies of people getting healed, getting delivered, uh, getting new jobs, um, and uh, getting financial breakthroughs. Uh, and so join us every Tuesday the hour of prayer, search us online. Uh, we are on live. And of course, it's also recorded so that you can watch it later and still claim in the name of Jesus everything that was prayed there by faith. Uh, we've had, um, uh, you know, uh, catch-ups with leaders. Uh, I had a really, really good catch-up with uh, my executive pastor, pastor or elder, Peng Ho, we call him. Uh, and, uh, you know, we met for about three hours uh, he was talking to me about different things and updating me and asking me questions on uh, how we should do this and that. And it was a really, really fruitful talk. Uh, and I'm believing uh, that everything we talked about, including uh, the, uh, I think it was uh, the SALT uh, meeting uh, that was held uh, on that particular Saturday. Uh, and it was a combined SALT. So that was really, really good. Uh, and... Um, yeah, we had, our, of course, our Chinspiration 5.0 uh, uh, meeting and uh, it's now in print, uh, as in, in the printers, I should say. And uh, hopefully, uh, in another week or two, uh, the book, the code book, Chinspiration 5.0, will be out. All right. Uh, of course, uh, we've been celebrating all the other anniversaries and birthdays of uh, Ex Osaka, Ex uh, Mochudi, uh, ex London, Bristol, Edinburgh. Uh, in fact, uh, even as uh, we speak, preparations are ongoing uh, for the getaway uh, in the UK. Uh, and right now, right now, as I speak, uh, Elder Shirley and Elder Kenyak uh, are uh, there uh, in uh, the UK uh, and uh, having a great time with Pastor Dave and Kat and all our leaders and partners there in the UK. So, very, very good. Uh, I'm going to take a short break uh, now. And when we come back, I'm going to be interviewing Elder King Yang. And I believe it's going to be a really, really special time and that you are going to be blessed. Life is a beautiful gift from God. Yet there are some who find it difficult to hold on to it. 
Lynette's or Life Inspired Network Society is a network of individuals and institutions with a heartbeat to inspire life, specifically through suicide prevention. If you are going through a tough time and need someone to talk to, you can always reach out to us for counselling. We also provide suicide prevention workshops and talks that help bring awareness to this area. For more info on Lynette's, you can visit our Facebook page at Life Inspired Network Society or email us at info at lynette's.org.my. You are precious and there is hope. Lynette's is here to help you. We're back from the break, and here we have in the studio uh, with me uh, Mr. Wong King Yak, uh, who we all at X Church affectionately known know as Elder King Yak. Uh, and uh, just a quick introduction, uh, King Yak, you are probably uh, my longest standing disciple. You are also uh, probably uh, the longest standing uh, partner and, um, and, and leader in X Church. Uh, and uh, I think I've known you longest. Um, I can remember that uh, I knew you or knew of you when you were in the youth group in FGA. Uh, Pai Sandra knows you more. Uh, and if you ask my wife if she was in the, in the studio with us, uh, she will tell you things that will make you laugh or cry uh, because she knows Kenya a little bit too well. Uh, and then you went to Australia uh, and you were studying there and I went to visit together with my wife one time and we saw you. Uh, I don't think you, uh, you know, uh, you were very friendly at that time uh, or maybe your attention was, was elsewhere. Uh, then uh, we, re we remember or I remember that uh, you came back with a few friends uh, and I um, took that occasion to share the vision of AYA uh, and uh, out of the few of you that came to hear that vision, uh, I think at the end of the day, only you uh, stuck to uh, the vision, which I'm very, 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 very glad uh, that you did. Uh, so uh, maybe tell us a little bit about that background or maybe the, the day you heard that vision, uh, and, uh, and uh, then we'll move on. Right. Uh, first of all, Pastor, thank you for um, allowing me here to be on this set. Uh, I remember the day really well because that was the day I, I flew back from Australia, Pastor. And you know, back then, I think my friends came to pick me up. So it was uh, sort of a free ride back home. Mm. But then I didn't know about their plans to meet you, Pastor. So it was sort of hijacked, mm. detoured to Subang Jaya SS-15. I remember, Pastor, when you shared about the dream about reaching uh, the Generation X and also about seeing revival coming to Malaysia. Uh, that, was some, that was something that resonated in my heart because I didn't just want to come back and uh, be just, just joining a church, huh, Pastor, and you know, the normal Sundays and mm. the, just want to do something a bit more than what I thought that I could do, Pastor. So mm. that's why when you shared the vision, and uh, it was quite immediate for me to respond, Pastor, because I remember reading about D2Y2 as well. Mm. And uh, the very first copy that you give out at FGA there, Pastor, was uh, the one with the X-Files logo. Mm. And there was a uh, sort of a bookmark there, Pastor. Right. And that was really a cutting edge because I remember back then that uh, when that was given out, uh, that was something that everybody was just trying to see which part of people they could, or which area they could serve in, Pastor. There was part I committed, or you graphic designer, you could play this. And mm. I wanted to just take all, Pastor, and just mm. wanted to do something. Because mm. wasn't satisfied just be just coming just to church, Pastor. So right. when you shared the vision, I just went back. I think I prayed very little about it. I just decided just, just see 
where the Lord wants to bring it, these two pastors. Mm. That was that was just the immediate thing, Pastor. Mm. This revival coming to Malaysia and and I remember you used this word that you know, Malaysia being a mission sending force, fire throughout Malaysia mm. of just hearts reaching the young people, Pastor. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um so you made the decision uh to join the vision. Yeah. And uh, that was the time, you know, I sort of uh brought you into my life and 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 started to disciple you. And yep. I can remember we having uh, Thursday yes, evenings. Uh, tell tell uh, the listeners a little bit more about that. Uh, what 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 went through your mind? Have you been discipled before that? Uh, right. Was this new to you? Uh, did you actually benefit from it? Tell mm. us a little bit about that time and how important it was, if at all, in your uh, life. Yep. I remember that those times, Pastor, where we shared about the future, Pastor, you shared about the future of what the Lord has given you, Pastor. And uh, for me, I really cherish those Thursday nights, the makan session, the discipleship moments because I don't think I was a disciple back then, Pastor. I had the I had the youth leader that cared for me and you know just asking me to read the Bible to pray. That was good, but I guess you know when there is a certain calling, Pastor. So uh, discipleship is still key and is much needed. Uh, the investment. Uh, into my life and you know uh, made plenty of mistakes along the way and you were there to encourage me to ask you to just it's all right you know just pick yourself up again and go for another day mm. uh, and uh, there were many moments pastor whereby you 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 shared uh, and also you corrected me and I just took it in because I knew that you know I because I knew where I came from pastor so I mm. knew I was talking to a person that you know that that went ahead a lot of things that went ahead and I saw how you actually live your life, the decision that you made, Pastor. Mm. And, you know, I really thought to myself, hey, this, this man really had a lot uh, of just, not just theory, you know, not just one of those uh, management guru books, you know, mm. quotes and just stuff like that, but the walking the talk, Pastor, and that was, that really sort of excited me. And also I saw your journey with the Lord, Pastor. And what I thought that, hey, I, I, need, I need that in my life mm. as well. I remember, Pastor, that you know that every time uh, when we meet, Pastor, we, there'll be days sometimes I brought my journal with me, Pastor, and we would just open up. When you were sharing, Pastor, I was just copying down some some of those uh, stuff that you shared, Pastor, mm. about you know those back then. I think about twenty years ago, the future dreams about having your own talk show, having our own mm. TV station, radio station, Pastor, and how to reach people and uh, stadium events, you know, and stuff mm. like that, Pastor. So it was very valuable, Pastor, because it helps me to sort of um, not to just stay where I am, Pastor, but the challenges really, at the end of the day, you pointed me to the Lord and mm. how to dream big, how to have faith, how to have even, you know, the belief, how to how to overcome mistakes, how to overcome the challenges, that especially some of the mindset that I had, Pastor. So that was very helpful. Mm. And I don't think really uh, a lot of places back then, Pastor, had that pastor mm. so that was a valuable investment that i always cherish my life pastor so good thank you for you know uh bringing up really really good precious <laughs> memories like that uh yeah because i really enjoyed those uh, thursday yep. uh, evenings as well uh besides the food right the food yeah, was really good yep. and we usually went to the ss2 no, uh lo, lo. Kai, uh, yep. and uh, almost sat at the same table yes pastor. uh and uh, those were good times yep and uh, i'm still so uh grateful that we uh Still having a strong relationship Amen, today and, and that friendship. Um, now you were a banker before you joined us uh, full time, mm -hmm. and it looked like you were, you know, uh, climbing the corporate ladder, <laughs> and uh, you had a, well, you still have, of course, the MBA, uh, yep. master's uh, degree, and so it looked like you were on your way, you know, uh, uh, to to do well in the in the corporate uh, field, um, but uh, you decided uh, mm. one day. Uh, to join me and to join us full time, uh, which I'm very very glad you did, of course. But let let uh, the listeners know a little bit about that decision making process. What you know inspired you to do it? I remember, Pastor, that you know, uh, I mean, when I was working in the bank, Pastor, uh, so on the on Saturdays I help out with new songs. Mm. Then of, of course on Sunday they're serving in church, mm. and uh, whenever there's opportunity, Pastor, I remember that you know, uh, AYA was invited to different events. Mm. Uh, different uh, get into God, and I would volunteer very naturally. Pass I volunteer myself to handle the booth mm. because you know um, I kind of like the books, pass the materials and the tapes, CDs back then. Sell CDs, cassette, mm. and uh, I also do know that is one of the uh, most 
sort of a not popular one because while everybody is in the concert or rather in the right. the whole the uh, studio environment yeah. and someone will be out there having to take care of the stuff. Sure. So I'm all right, Pastor. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. okay. I remember uh, those those days was good days, Pastor, you know, uh, seeing explaining to people what materials could help them with the Christian faith. Mm. So I was doing that, Pastor, for some time. And, you know, uh, MBA was introduced to me by my good friend. And uh, it was more like, hey, do you want to do MBA? You know, I thought mm. to myself, like, hey, it's got free time. I said, just do that. Uh, and um, we started having this conversation of coming to full-time ministry uh, about, I think, two, about a year and a half to two years, Pastor. Um, and I wasn't fully satisfied with my work because I knew that, you know, being at 20-something, there has to be so much more, Pastor. I remember going for job uh, performance or rather performance appraiser or job appraiser, Pastor, with my managers. And, you know, because... Uh, I guess it's because Pastor, of all the months of years of discipleship, I just I couldn't fit in into an environment whereby this is my only pie, Pastor. This mm. is the only pie, or rather this is my life mm. uh, that I'm supposed to call. You know, remember one time I was doing the job appraiser, say, oh, I can't, pro can't promote you this year mm. because I promised the promotion go to another person. Mm. And I just told the interviewer, it's all right, you know, you can just, you can just, you know, give it out. I said, there's, I said, you're fighting after a small pie. I want to go after a new pie. So just, mm. you can keep this small pie. They want to sound arrogant, Pastor, but that, I truly believe that um, there has to be so much more than just, right. just that. Then the, we have many conversations about the full-time ministry. Mm. I remember the, on my birthday, Pastor, you wouldn't give me a book by Duck Sheets, uh, mm. uh, which you know, about God's timing, mm. Cairo's moment and stuff like that. And uh, read that up. And uh, I knew, Pastor, that no, I, I think I, I remember one or two times where I said, I promised to come in, Pastor. Then after that, I then got delayed mm. uh, because, you know, it's, I guess the decision to come in, Pastor, as, as you're nearing the decision, right, there will be always that, 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 that testing moment, Pastor, yeah, whereby sure. whether it is real or not. And, I, and uh, for me, one was that, you know, I got a promotion that very year I was supposed to resign. Then after that, got extra bonus after that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that, that after sort of delayed the decision a bit more, mm. uh, then my boss was just asking me, you know, I really like your job, like your work, and you know, stuff like that, you know, could you just push your resignation to, you know, a few more months later? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure. It's nice to be, f nice to, uh, to feel that you're needed, Pastor, and yeah. that you're contributing. But I also do know that, you know, that, uh, that this is something that the Lord has put in my heart as well, Pastor, after you shared about the vision and, 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 and the need in the ministry. I also do know that, you know, if, there, if I do miss this boat, sometimes that when the boat sails, Pastor, mm. although God is a God of second chances, but it will not be the same boat. It might be a different boat, Pastor. Mm. And uh, I didn't want to miss out that, the opportunity, the chance, and um, to see what the Lord has. And that very year I was supposed to resign, that was my final year in my, my MBA, Pastor. Mm. And uh, when I got the result, I passed, finally cleared my MBA. Uh, I have decided to actually to, to throw in the letter. Uh, mm. My mom looked at me. I remember she said, "You, it's almost like you, you work so hard for your MBA, you can climb the corporate ladder, yeah. uh, and you're resigning to join full-time ministry." Uh, I remember the words of my mom was saying that you are getting your, your you're well paid at the bank. Now you're almost getting offering. You're getting your paid. You're getting your pay by the congregation of the church mm. who happens to be campus student. Mm. And uh, I said, she can't, she can't take it. Mm. I said, I, I told my mom that, you know, that something I got to do. And I remember giving the letter, Pastor, that was the, the time whereby there was just peace, Pastor, giving the, the letter mm. after postponing for a year, almost a year, Pastor, mm. because, you know, one more year, you know, one more year, another year of bonus, you know, yeah, plan yeah. B and just stuff like that. Uh, and uh, when I gave the letter, Pastor, coming to full time ministry, I knew what I wanted to do, Pastor. You know, just to help any way I can. You know, is to to see a strong resource arm mm. of 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 AYA back then, mm. and uh, and that's what something I was doing really, Pastor. And I guess a lot of times, Pastor, we talk about entering full time. A lot of people just um, I enter first, then I do, Pastor. Mm. Uh, I had I had the doing part before I entered, yeah, Pastor. That's right. And, uh, and 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 that's sort of when I resigned. It was more a transition of a, of a workspace mm. from KL to Subang. Mm. So I I, did, I wasn't lost in, in in full time. Just 
by the time I knew what I was doing, Pastor, because mm. I think that was very key for me, Pastor. So, mm. yeah, so I gave the letter, Pastor, and uh, and I remember that uh, it was, uh, 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 even my boss also knew already, she couldn't hold me on, on already, because mm. she said that I said this is the last I could extend already. Right. And I and then when I trained the letter buster and I had perfect peace and then I came full time. But yeah, mm. the initial struggle was very real. Every time we come closer to the date, that there's always different temptation, mm. or maybe one more year, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. Oh, that's a great story, uh, and I'm sure it's going to be an encouragement to a lot uh, of uh, people mm. uh, who probably are going through the same or similar uh, situation. Uh, I know of at least one mm. now. Uh, who uh, is uh, feeling the strong call uh, to come into uh, full-time yeah. ministry and also having a very, really good job out there. Uh, we're going to take a break uh, and then we're going to come back again, Kenya, because yeah, I've got uh, one or two more questions sure, uh, to ask you. All right, thank you. We're back again uh, with uh, Elder Kenya in the studio and already for about a good 15 minutes earlier, we heard so many gems uh, of a man uh, who has been called by God and who has been faithful not only to answer the call but to continue to answer the call. Uh, I want to say something about that very quickly. Uh, sometimes people know what it means to answer the call first time uh, but to continue to answer the call till the end of time, that is the challenge. Uh, and I wish and I hope and I pray that more and more younger ones especially will know what it means to continue to answer the call. Yeah. That every morning when you wake up and of course trouble is going to increase. Of course, uh, there'll be problems, there'll be challenges, you know. Uh, but in no way should we ever step out of our calling. Uh, because I've said it before, I've taught it before that outside of our calling is darkness and danger. But in our calling is safety, is satisfaction. Uh, and um, while, you know, uh, we will face many challenges, um, our calling is almost non-negotiable. And Kenya, uh, your life ha has really shown that. Uh, you know, if I uh, could attribute uh, sort of like an animal uh, to you, uh, I would say uh, that you remind me, and the Bible speaks about this, about the ox. Uh, and because you uh, are not afraid to get your hands dirty and your feet as well, uh, and uh, you, you, you are one who works, uh, pulls, pushes, carries uh, without any complaint. Uh, most of us who know you, uh, know you as a person who is okay being at the background. Uh, supporting, supporting, supporting the vision no matter what it takes, uh, whether you have to drive uh, the car, uh, carry the equipment, buy the equipment, research for equipment, uh, and yet you also are a good speaker. Uh, I hear so many people being blessed by your preaching, uh, you know, Sunday after Sunday now. At one time, you probably only spoke once a month. Now, I think you're speaking almost every uh, week and you drive to the different church plants uh, and of course, uh, you and Shirley uh, were so uh, willing and ready uh, to go to uh, UK uh, for us uh, to be there uh, with the ex-UK getaway. Uh, so you're always willing, uh, Kenya, and uh, always working also. Uh, and uh, some of us know that you had the heart attack scare uh, and uh, that we almost lost you, but God was not done with you. Uh, so it looked like you worked until your heart stopped uh, and then revived again uh, and still working as hard. Of course, you are more careful now uh, with your diet and your exercise. Uh, and so that's also good, right? Uh, not to take things for granted. Uh, but, you know, just with all that I just said, uh, what is your inspiration? What is your drive? What, what are the thoughts that come into your mind when times are hard? Uh, what keeps you going? Can you? Yeah. Uh, Pastor, I, I'm glad you asked a question. Uh, first of all, Pastor, I, I guess number one, for me, the the, the calling, Pastor, really uh, to serve the Lord through the ministry, Pastor, 
uh, through the, the man of God that God has placed over my life. I, I think a lot of times when people answer the calling pastor, they just it's between them and the Lord, which is very true. But very seldom it's a ministry on their own, pastor. And for me, at this, this, this is how I see it. Um, for me, when I answered the full-time call, pastor, was to serve under you, pastor. Mm. And, uh, and, and that's what I did. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, the word was uh, jealous of people taking the stage. Uh, I was uh, you know, wanting to be in every, uh, in the in the ins of the, the stadium events, mm. uh, only because I kind of knew really that, you know, when you ask to serve, you just serve wherever and God place you. And uh, I was very uh, happy doing that, Pastor. Mm. And uh, I got no qualms doing that because I, I truly believe that as you serve, the man of God, and you know, ultimately you're serving the Lord. Mm. And that's what I do feel right now, that that's for me motivation, but because, Pastor, I, I'm not sure how many people actually know your journey, Pastor, really. Uh, because I think I got to know of AYA, or of, of you back in, of, of you, of course, in FJ, Pastor. Yeah. Then subsequently, after Australia came back, I remember dropping ball, passing by uh, Kingdom Rocks at, like next to Yamaha and mm. PJ that's like there. And from there after that, you know, then you moved to SS15. I remember going to SS15, Pastor, and how the ministry grew. You know, the ministry can only grow because of the man of God following the Lord, Pastor, and that's why the faithfulness is there, Pastor. And I recognize that, Pastor, over your life, you know, very seldom in an individual's journey, you get to follow someone who follows the Lord so closely, whereby it's just filled with stories of faith, Pastor. Mm. And the stories of faith is something we choose. So I, I, I also need it because at the end of the day, you know, we are called to live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. And something which, uh, well, there are a lot of good teachers out there, uh, uh, great speakers out there, but there are very few fathers, fathers mm -hmm. who follow God, like Abraham. Mm -hmm. And you exhibit that, Pastor. And I remember so many moments whereby uh, when they didn't, didn't understand the concept of faith, Pastor, in the mm -hmm. sense of like, Although we read about it in Hebrews 11 verse 6, the way of faith is impossible, please God. Yep. But the exercising of it, it's something which back then, this is back in the, the 90s, Pastor, uh, unheard of, you know, starting off a ministry, emptying your own bank account uh, to put into something, you know, building a resource center, Pastor, back then, from level two, taking all the, from one floor, take two floors, all mm -hmm. four floors, Pastor, at SS15. And that really inspires me because I truly believe that, you know, that the Lord's with you in this journey, Pastor. Amen. And that was, that was what motivates me, Pastor, because the Lord's with you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And you follow the Lord very closely and there are things that, Pastor, I know that, I know, I, I remember the, the, there were moments, Pastor, whereby um, people have left you earlier days. Uh, there was nothing bad you said about anybody, Pastor. I remember knocking at the door of your office, uh, SS15 there, the room was just dark. You were just seeking the Lord, Pastor. And then I was asking you some things there. And you're just seeking the Lord, Pastor. You weren't, you weren't angry. You weren't upset. You're just asking God, what should I do next? Mm -hmm. And that really inspires me because I've, because in natural, natural sense, Pastor, of course, you know, the emotion sticks over, the, the thought process sticks over. And that really solidified my journey, Pastor. Like, you know, and uh, when I get out in the morning, because I, I also do know, Pastor, that, that you follow the Lord so closely, Pastor, and the Lord speaks to you. And we are on this journey together. And Amen. although the journey is for a season, I mean, for a time, Pastor, mm. it will come, take to pass. I know that that will come to pass. Mm. We have this uh, dream about a talk show, Pastor, for mm. the longest time. Yeah. And uh, and no money back then, Pastor, but no money. And you, we always encourage us, uh, but with a big God, we can dream. Yeah. Dream is free. And, mm. and, and a lot of times people stop dreaming because they don't they look at the resources. They don't even start to dream. Right. But you started dreaming, Pastor. You you actually had, I remember, I'm not sure, but you remember, Pastor, you had this picture of a tree, Pastor, and you just drop this branch is for what, this branch is what, mm. and the roots is, is to go where. And I reflect on the journey, Pastor. Uh, that motivates me mm. uh, to do what I needed to do. And I also knew my place in my calling, Pastor, because unless the Lord opens the door, I don't, I, I don't need to. If you ask me, I remember uh, IC, Resources, IC Resources was mm. selling uh, notebooks mm. 
you had a journal called Everybody Needs a Savior. Mm. I said, let's try to raise some funds. And you know, and I thought to myself that it, 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 it shouldn't be faster that whereby it's, it's you, know, you know, that God cannot bless uh, our, the work of our hands. Yeah. And, you know, if you ask me to knock, Pastor, I did knock, knock on doors of pastors, churches mm. in their resource center, would you allow us to put the notebook in there? Some were friendly, some were kind. Mm. Uh, some was a bit more um, uh, a bit more unpleasant, but that's all right. You know, mm. uh, all for the glory of God at the end of the day, Pastor. Mm. And it, it doesn't really matter, you know. I was, I was very comfortable, Pastor. Really, I see you so comfortable at my place. Mm. Uh, when we were doing the cafe back then, the ground floor, and you know we had a lot of volunteers, uh, and you know when we were volunteers, pastor, sometimes they really drive you up the wall, pastor. <laughs> uh, one of them put the spoon in the blender, pastor. That was an epic <laughs> story. Uh, who happens to be our leader in our church right now? Uh, the other people would actually throw coleslaw into the drainage, which got stuck. Wow. And I remember when every time when someone tried to. F- uh, use the toilet and the, the coleslaw from the toilet uh. floor trap will overflow. <laughs> and the only way to get rid of it is to put your hands inside there uh, and dig out the coleslaw yeah. that was in there for about a week. Uh, what motivates me, Pastor, is really to see that if this is God's dream, it requires work. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of hard work because um, maybe that's how I'm wired, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is no accomplishment without hard work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, the, the early mornings, the late nights, mm-hmm. and uh, that was my hallmark, Pastor. You know, just mm. if God asks you to serve, you just serve. Mm. And until the thing, the task is complete. Mm. I remember you shared that, you know, it's not, the event is not over until everybody reaches back to their own home. Mm. Doesn't mean the event is the, 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 a, a concert or, or ended at church, then mm. the event's over. But events, is everything is back into place mm. and everybody gets back home safely. That's that's, right. Yeah, so Pastor, that's, that's, that's I, I see you, Pastor, as a person who follow God very closely. Mm. You have so many stories of faith. And I, got, and I knew I was on a journey learning from you, Pastor. Mm. Uh, and uh, learning how you carry yourself. And I, Pastor, and, and the privilege and really to follow you to some of the meetings with the different pastors uh, who are much older than you, much more senior than you, how you're very respectful of them mm. how, how, and how you honoured them, Pastor. Uh, that inspires me as well. Mm. Uh, you also brought me to different meetings with businessmen, Pastor. Mm. And how sometimes I... You know, because of the ministry, Pastor, you have the ask of funds, mm-hmm. uh, p- present a proposal, and some were very kind, very believing, very encouraging. Some were uh, a bit more, um, <laughs> not rude, lah, Pastor, but just they're just a bit, bit more, up, uh, a bit more straightforward, Pastor. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you're alright, Pastor. You just smile and just carry a conversation, mm-hmm. and I and I like that, Pastor, because you know many times. I'm not sure whether I have the ability mm. to do what you do, Pastor, and I recognize there's a, there's a difference and I need to sort of, for, for me, my growth, or rather my growth plan is to come as close mm. as I can uh, to where you are, Pastor. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Wow, thank you for those encouraging words uh, and also for, uh, you know, just your story. Uh, it inspires me as well uh, because, you know, definitely you want to continue to do whatever it is that works for others. Uh, so these things worked for you and and uh, to have you uh, by my side, uh, you know, it's very complimentary uh, as you are saying, you know, I, I have a gift, but you also have a gift. And so I see you faithful. Uh, I see you as an ox, a worker, and uh, unafraid to get your hands dirty, as we said. Uh, you know, you're not ashamed of background things, caring things, even though you're an elder. So I think a lot of people are inspired by that in your life, you know, they see you uh, just work and uh, not getting any uh, or not wanting any of the glory or any any of the, uh, you know, the limelight. Uh, and yet that uh, makes you a good uh, preacher because you are a preacher not just with head knowledge. Uh, and many who don't get their hands dirty, don't put their hands to the plow, don't work the work and sweat the sweat, don't really have real stories to share. And so I've been hearing uh, over and over again that uh, Elder Kaya has really continuously, constantly improved uh, in his delivery of the word. And I think it's not the, it's not just, you know, because uh, sometimes when you hear that, you think that, oh, uh, is it 
just my language, my communication skills, and and I think it's a little bit of all that. But I think a person is actually building a story. And the more the years go by, um, like every line on our, on our forehead is a story. You know, every wrinkle is a story. And sometimes people don't, I don't want the wrinkles. I don't want the, and, and But actually, it's beauty. Uh, when you see a, a hand that does no work and a hand that does work, you know, it tells a story. Uh, and, uh, and, and God wants to give you that story so that you have something more to say and something more to contribute. Uh, and so that's my story of your story, uh, of your life, I should say. And, 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 uh, and uh, the, the reason why I'm not surprised that people are saying that they are being so blessed uh, with Elder Kang Yak's sharing and preaching is that, to me is that. Uh, because you can be the most eloquent pre preacher. And of course, we have a scripture in the Bible, I think it's in First uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 2, uh, verse uh, you know, 1 to 5. Uh, Paul, the apostle himself, is saying, I did not come to you with eloquence or with wisdom of men. You know, so you can imagine uh, even the Apostle Paul being as great an apostle as he was, uh, that he himself is not boasting in his communication skills. Although a lot of people will argue that that's the most important. No, it's not. It's, it's what you carry. Uh, and, and, and what you carry is weight um, that God puts on you uh, like, you know, you know, one more gold bar, one more gold bar, uh, one more testimony, uh, one more uh, story of uh, exploit, you know, and, 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 and you become a weightier. And that's what glory is. Glory is weight. Uh, and God sort of like allows, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, quote unquote glory or weight uh, in the form of real stories because people don't stop working for Him. Uh, after, after what people tend to want to give up or want to resign and retire, from the work and just think that they can continue to speak because they're eloquent. But actually, they don't realize that the work and the word goes hand in hand. The work and the word goes hand in hand. The more you allow God to work you and you work the work of God, the more your word will carry weight. The more your word will be sought after because they want to know a man and a woman who actually uh, has gone through the miles, paid the price. Uh, they don't just want to hear from a person who just got like, you know, I'm just getting it from theory or from a book or from a video. Uh, that's why your life uh, is it's, it's so weighty in terms of its benefit and, uh, and contribution to the people around you. And, and people uh, see that, Kenya, and they respect that. And that's why I know a lot of people respect you because uh, you, you do what you say, say what you do, uh, and you're not afraid to pay the price. And uh, until today, you're still driving me to the airport. And you know, many times I tell you, you don't have to, I'll try to get a grab. Uh, I'm trying to also do my part not to take you for granted at all. Uh, but then, you know, uh, you continuously do it and you wait for me at the airport to bring me back. But you're already the elder, you're the chief elder, you're our financial controller, you're a speaker, uh, and you're all that. And, uh, and yet, you don't shy away from that, you know, heart of a servant, and, uh, and uh, you know, you, your, your support to me really is invaluable. And I must say that uh, all the things that I have experienced in terms of achievements, uh, uh, I attribute a lot of it to your support and also to your wife's support, who a lot of people have already heard is uh, one of the longest serving PAs in Malaysia. Uh, and she also told me that, uh, Pastor, it's not just because you're a good boss that I've worked for you so long, but because I feel the call of God. And that, you know, if I could have a theme uh, today, which I don't, but uh, it could be just the, 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 the seriousness of the call uh, and, and, and the faithfulness to it. Uh, and it's not the call of Kenneth Chin or anyone else who called you, but it's God who called you. And you are, yeah, you might be serving the man of God, as you were saying, but actually at the end of the day, you're serving the Lord, yeah. uh, which is a very, very powerful Correct, thing. Sir. I guess, Pastor, uh, I think, from, I mean, really, you know, Pastor, we talk about serving the Lord. The Lord will always use people, Pastor. And uh, there's, there, can only, there can only be one Moses, and the rest are lifting up his arms. And I think a lot of people want to be a Moses, Pastor. And 
because Moses is uh, the center of attention, lift up his hands and raise he parted. But there's a time and season for everything. And uh, for me, really, Pastor, that uh, when I answered the call, Pastor, uh, you, you, you were the Moses, Pastor. And until that time, the Lord calls you home, my job and my calling is just to serve the ministry God mm. has given you, Pastor. Amen. And, I, and, and that's why I, I do see that a lot of times that a lot of people struggle that, you know, it's, it's, it's serving the Lord, but then there's no one there. There's, there's no accountability there. There is no... Because it's very easy to, to preach a message to have faith. Uh, but really, Pastor, I've seen your life that whereby when you don't have, you still give. Uh, and uh, the earlier days, Pastor, at Jasmine Tower, I remember that, although it's simple, but though it was significant, Pastor. Uh, open up your home, Pastor. And, and, that, and that really encourages uh, me as well because um, many times I think that, again, they, pe- very few people don't recognize the man of God in their life, Pastor. And because they don't recognize, they just see you as just a man. Uh, see you on anybody, just their pastor is just, uh, just a man. But there is a call of God on, on people's life that people need to recognize and to know. And so, of course, it's a privilege, Pastor, really, uh, to serve. You know, we are here uh, to serve uh, each other and also ultimately serve the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God must grow at the end of the day. Mm. And, uh, but times I do hear people just say that, you know, I just serve the Lord. There's nothing in between there. Mm. And based on when I'm free, when uh, my uh, availability moments, but Pastor, you have always challenges and calls to say, if, if it's not you, then when? Mm. If it's not you, then who? Mm. If it's not now, then when? That, that statement really uh, mm. uh, sort of uh, encourages me. Uh, just one more story, Pastor. I just, uh, what, I just remember all that we've been doing, Pastor. I remember you shared the story about your dad that says that, just give me your phone. Mm. I'll get the job done. And I hear stories like that because I had same values, Pastor. Mm. Just give me whatever tools, I mean, for now. Yeah. Right? I don't need to wait for a mobile phone to come and I don't have it. Just give me a landline phone. Mm. And if we don't use what we have, we're not going to use what we're going to get later. Yeah. So all these things I learned through the ministry, Pastor, and that's why um, I, I'm very encouraged by our journey as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we have probably about three minutes yeah. for this uh, segment. Uh, what advice would you like to give to the younger uh, leaders, younger ministers? Well, it's really don't rush the process. Um, mm, that's good. I think we live in a, not live, uh, but you know, there's always a temptation really uh, to abandon the process as God has has brought the individual tr- uh, through. You know, I remember when I was younger, Pastor, you know, that uh, I view my parents who knows everything. As we get older, and sometimes we think that we know more than our parents, and and maybe some to some people it's true, but that doesn't discount the fact that, you know, they're still our parents. Mm. And why I say that, don't rush the process, because sometimes we want to abandon uh, the rush to be a parent ourselves, the rush to do certain things on our own. I don't want... No, I'm, now I'm older, I'm wiser, or rather I got more resources. Uh, and therefore, I can almost do it. And later say, oh, God bless it. But yeah, I'm sure God will bless person, but, but we could have missed the boat. Mm. There's more than just seeing an ev- it's, it's There's more than just to an event. It's always been our, about our hearts. Mm. Uh, what the Lord wants to deal with us internally. Mm. There's something called patience, waiting. There's something called no. Mm. and uh, there's something maybe uh, work with what we have mm. and uh, I learned that through the, through the ministry pastor I remember serving one time at uh, you were preaching pastor at uh, and uh, then I towards the end closing closing a message then we, the sanctuary was at third floor hospitality was the second floor mm. and uh, I was and you were closing I was going to get up go downstairs prepare the yam cake the coca cola mm-hmm. to serve I was getting up then after that, you know, then I, I remember a guy, Pastor, <laughs> that we know, stood up and just said, hey, can you sit down here? And, you know, I don't go down. I looked at him. I went like, okay, sure. Why not? You know, the stuff that. I understand what I'm trying to say, Pastor, that, you know, not, it's not just about the ministry, but I, I knew, Pastor, really, at the end of the day, uh, really, it's 
uh, to know, to serve, and just and just wait on God's timing, and not to rush certain things because a lot of times these days people say, "Oh, uh, if God tells you so, I got to act it now." Mm. But it's true. Certain things are true, Pastor. But there's something called serving, Pastor. If I have anything to tell the younger people is don't cut short the process because the Lord wants to deal with us yeah. internally. And when, when the guy told me, asked me to sit down, I could be angry, you know, no, I'm just, just doing my part, you know, making sure that things run, but to stop, just let it go. And mm. remember there were time, Pastor, whereby I had disagreement with people. You spoke to me, said it's because I am the most senior one, take the first step, offer, offer apology first, you know, extend the arm of, you know, of, of reconciliation. Mm. And I thought to myself, like, wow, I didn't do anything wrong, Pastor. The person just asked me whether got budget or not, and I just said no. Uh, it's a yes or no question for me in my mind, Pastor. Mm. But you saw deeper than that. Mm. You saw a brother that's hurting. You saw there's an opportunity of healing, reconciliation for a testimony and for a story. Uh, but if I just decided, no, no, I didn't do anything wrong, why should I say sorry? Mm. And stuff like that. I could have cut short the process. Yeah. And I would have learned. And yeah. uh, ultimately, God will never get the glory of a transformed life, not a transformed mm. event, mm. a transformation event. But ultimately, it's our life that God is after, not the event pastor yeah. so i'll tell the younger people really that don't cut short the process because in the whole journey of serving un under another person we get to work on our character which is more important and more valuable than any uh event mm. any fundraising mm. right and that will carry us to the to the to the day we're going to see the lord yeah pastor. that's so good Kenya. you know i think about the uh, process our god is a god of process yeah uh, many people don't know that. Yeah. Some people forget that. But life is process. Yeah. You know, baby to uh, old age, uh, cradle to grave. Uh, you think about transformation, you think about a butterfly yeah. going from a caterpillar into the cocoon. Yeah. Uh, and then the butterfly, you cut the process, you know, butterfly is not going to happen. You think about nine month pregnancy. Correct. It can't be six. It can't be seven. It shouldn't even be eight. Yeah. It should be nine. Uh, you think about so many things, right? Goal being yeah. purified is a process. Uh, you know, to to patiently wait uh, under the right temperature. Yep. It's very hot. I heard to uh. do, to 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 get the impurities out of goal. But if you circumvent that process, you will not get gold yeah. or you will not get gold purified. And if you don't get gold purified the way it should be purified, then the cost or the value of that gold yes. is not going to be as it should be, as God intended it to be. Yes, so it's process everywhere you look. Yep. And yet sometimes we don't remember process in our journey. Yeah. Uh, so I really love that advice. And I think all of us should take it uh, to heart. Uh, so thank you so much, Kenya, for uh, you know spending uh, quality time with us today. Mm. I'm sure someone out there is blessed uh, or maybe more than just someone and maybe more than just one point uh, <laughs> that you had shared. Uh, thank you so much, Amen, uh, so very much. We're going to go into a break now and uh, we're going to enjoy a song that was written in-house but also translated into uh, Iban. Uh, enjoy that song.
Well, hello and uh, welcome back from uh, the break. I uh, hope you had enjoyed uh, what the break had to offer you. Uh, and uh, we are just uh, really, really blessed in this church here to be writing uh, new songs and translating it uh, into different uh, languages. Uh, Shirley is back in the studio with us. And for those of you who uh, were in the first episode, I introduced her, I uh, interviewed her. And uh, for the sake of those who didn't get to hear that first episode, Shirley is my PA and she's been my PA for over 21 years. She's been working uh, with us in this organization for nearly 23 years. And uh, she is, uh, yeah, she's going well. She's uh, looking healthy. Uh, she's lost a lot of weight, uh, she and her husband, uh, King Yang. And, uh, you know, Shirley tells me, Pastor, the only reason why I exercise a lot is because I like to eat a lot. Yes. Uh, and so that's, that's a good deal. Um, so uh, we, of course, started a new uh, segment uh, called uh, PA101. Uh, and uh, Shirley is just going to try uh, every time I put her back on uh, to do maybe three points. Uh, sometimes maybe even two points uh, if she's, uh, you know, going to take uh, longer uh, than uh, what uh, we think she's going to take uh, to be able to explain uh, to us uh, how she has learned to be a super PA. And I, that's for me, okay, that's not what she's saying. I'm saying she's a super PA and uh, she's a real, real amazing support to me. Uh, and uh, I don't know uh, whether I've, I could have come uh, this far without her help all these 21 years. So, uh, Shirley, are you ready to, uh, to give us all some pointers of uh, how we can all, uh, well, not, not all of us are called to be PAs, but all the PAs out there, and maybe even the bosses who are listening, uh, you know, uh, tell us, tell us one or two thoughts that's up in your head. Wow, Pastor, as I say, I, re I really, don't, I'm not sure what is it, but I'm um, learning as we go, Pastor, and uh, I think a lot of things could be quite common sense. Okay. Yeah. Because, common sense. Yeah, common sense. Because you just that the uh, common sense is not so not common. Not so common nowadays. Yeah. yeah. But because you are technically you are supporting and helping someone, right? If you're talking about just the supporting part and the PA part. So pretty much a lot of things are common sense, but like you said, not all common sense are common nowadays. Uh so if we are going to uh put some pointers like I think we mentioned the last time uh, about care. Yeah, because uh, that I learned from you as mm. well. And you shared that you learned from uh, your late dad mm. that if you want to do anything well, uh, it's really the word care. Mm. Um, and, and that has been almost like a clear guiding light to a lot of things that we do. Mm. And uh, others, I would say other points are like sub points. Mm. And care would be the main point, but the main header. And because you care, you would um, go the extra mile. Mm you would put yourself into the person's shoes, mm. like how you would like to be treated. Of course, the Bible mm. also tells us, like, uh, treat others like how you mm. want to be treated. And, and of course, we know that not everybody, not everybody is the same. Mm. Like, what, what I like might not be what the other person like. Right. Um, like, 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 some people, they, they like um, the other person to be very, very attentive, like looking to, into a lot of details. But I also understand that some people they prefer to work more, um, very much independently, like, because, like, oh, you don't do this for me, like, it's okay, I, I can do this, no. Um, oh, and, and that, if that happens, then it's almost like, then, then what does the PA do? Mm, yeah. <laughs> right? Because like, I heard uh, some people are, are, I mean, every bosses, every everyone is different. Mm. So, um, yeah, so while we say that you can go the extra mile and all that, but I think the other point also yeah about putting yourself into the person's shoes then i think the other thing also is to really know who is that person because many times i realize that when we say you put yourself into the other person's shoes but who is that person mm. and in this case uh it is a very organic working relationship i would say pastor and to put yourself into the other person's shoes then you got to really know the person mm. you can't you can't say, uh, oh, for example, like, oh, I used to work with so-and-so and he's like that or she's like that. And so, I've, whatever I've learned there, then I I apply cut mm. and paste mm. absolutely 100% into this current person, mm. which is not going to work because mm. 
yeah, everyone is different. So even in our organizations, but I realize I'm all of us work differently. Yeah. And uh, I've heard like some people may uh, they 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 could be playing a supporting role, and uh, their 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 bosses or their superiors they all work differently. Mm. Some some when you do a certain thing for them, they might think like, hey, why why you do this for me? I can do this myself. Mm. Yeah, or they prefer to do it themselves. You know, uh, for what whatever reasons. Uh, so I think to put yourself into the person's shoes, then it also means that you do, you, you really got to know who you are working with, mm. Pastor. So I think for me, I have the opportunity and the privilege to to get to know both you and Pastor Andra even through the years uh, since I joined because I I start with zero, Pastor. Mm. I I didn't start by attending X Church. Mm. I, I I started by coming for an interview, a mm. job interview. You know, that was the first time I met two of you. Mm. And uh, in fact, it was funny. One well, of the fun fact that, that day was like, Pastor Sarah said, have you heard of a D2Y2? Mm. You know? I said, no. Mm. <laughs> I, I think she must be thinking, huh? How can you know about it? Because that's how the ministry started, mm. right? Uh, we, we did D2Y2, mm. Cutting Edge magazine. But I have never, I never heard of D2Y2. And, and then right before I left from the interview, Pastor Sarah gave me a whole stack of a, uh, D2, I took a few copies inside with a folder and say, here you go, uh, maybe you should read up these magazines that we produce to help you understand better of our ministry. Then you decide whether you want this job or not. Mm. So, so, yeah, so, yeah, I started from zero, Pastor. So I think, um, but of course, every relationship, it grows. So of course, after that, I, I came to X Church as well and I got to see uh, and know you from work and also from uh, church, Pastor, because you are both my boss and also my pastor, mm. my leader, my spiritual father. So all the roles kind of intertwine, Pastor. <laughs> yep. So so but yeah, knowing the person and then only you can put yourself into the person's shoes. Mm. And and that also is a journey, like Pastor. It's mm. it, it through um try and error, yep. mistakes, you know. And, and yeah, because you, you have to really know who you are working with, especially mm. in this sense, Pastor, um we have to work closely with certain like deadlines and times mm. and, and work. So so I think knowing the person really helps us. Yeah, mm. yeah, fantastic. So uh, with the minute uh, or minute and a half that we have left, uh, thank you, Shirley. I, I sort of uh, can summarize uh, what you just said. Uh, well, number one, I hear common sense. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, you can learn anything actually in this world with common sense. Um, and uh, But common sense also takes concentration. Meaning that you got to be looking, you got to be uh, looking out for that, right? Uh, uh, and and your eyes open and aware. You cannot be like, uh, you know, sometimes uh, please excuse the expression, but dumb blonde, yeah, uh, 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 like don't know uh, what's happening. Uh, and uh, the excuse is, I wasn't, I didn't realize, I didn't see. So you got to have your eyes open. Yeah, you got to be a detailed person. You got to be watching. You got to be learning as you go. So uh, I, I, I would see common sense, but with concentration. So your, 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 your common sense is applied as you concentrate. Mm -hmm. I also hear the word care, which is very, very powerful, the guiding light uh, of uh, all that we do here. Uh, so when you care enough, then you, know, uh, you, you want to make sure that that person is comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and and that person is experiencing convenience. Yeah. So there are a couple of C's I I I, I, I see <laughs> that uh, you are sharing here. Uh, so a really really good PA makes uh, her boss his boss, whether it's a lady or a man. Uh, I, I'm going to try to make his life as comfortable as possible so that he or she can do what he or she does best. Yes. And of course, you know people do their best when they are comfortable. Yes. Even when you do an interview like this, you know, if you're not comfortable and you're nervous, you're going to not do as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, sports and, 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 and presentations and uh, uh, exams, mm. you've got to be comfortable. Mm. And now you have a person in your life uh, whose goal is to make you as comfortable mm. as possible. Water on the table uh, uh, so that you know he is comfortable and doesn't have a dry throat, etc., etc. Uh, you know, a, a, a TV uh, that tells him what's next uh, right in front of him, so that he, you know. So, but all these takes work. Mm. Uh, but you work to make that person's life a little bit more comfortable, so that he or she can uh, excel. Uh, according to his or her gifting. Yeah. And then, of course, convenience because the, uh, the opposite of convenience is inconvenience. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it can be inconvenient to find a car park 
uh, in a place that is really jammed up, but yeah. you know that I have to rush up for that meeting. And so you call in or you ask someone to go and find a car park for me or you are getting somebody to uh, actually take over my car uh, and, and I run in to yeah. that interview or that meeting uh, and then that person from our office, yeah. most probably, uh, will be taking my car and you know waiting. And So I get a lot, people probably don't understand that's what you and even Kenya uh, do for me. Uh, they, you know, they don't understand a lot of why why do we do this? Is there a school that teaches you <laughs> to send somebody to go and take pastor's car uh, because there's no parking or it's raining cats and dogs mm. and the only way I can get dry or, or be dry, stay dry I should say, is to go under the shade which is usually where the front door is. But then what happens is somebody is waiting at the front door for me to take my car uh, so that I can remain dry. Again, it's back to convenience. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I work to, to, to make sure that my boss or, or my leader who I care for uh, uh, has as much convenience, again, so that he can fulfill yeah. his calling. So there are a lot of things uh, from even a, a glass of water to taking over my car, to finding a car park, to making sure that there is a designated car park for me or you, know, uh, you, you do my air tickets, you're, you're making sure that I'm checked in. Uh, you know, uh, you call in even uh, when I go for meetings and, and making sure that uh, people know what time I'm coming. Yeah. And so, so that I, they I, might forget, was it? That's right. Uh, so people <laughs> might forget. People might take things for granted. Uh, is there enough water in my, my uh, hotel room? You're trying to arrange for that. I know that you are always asking uh, the hotel, wherever I stay at, to put me on a higher floor, <laughs> nearer to the lifts. So, you know, I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's really common sense concentration on the details, care, uh, comfortable, mm -hmm. making your, 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 the person that you're serving comfortable and convenience. Uh, so sh there you go, Shirley. You can put these five Cs <laughs> into uh, your book uh, and uh, we'll try to find for a couple more Cs. Uh, yes. the, the next time I invite you, well, it doesn't have to be C. It uh, <laughs> can be anything else. But uh, thank you for that. I'm sure it's very, very helpful. Now, now the thing is, as I closed this uh, episode, I want to say that it, it takes uh, some uh, effort to be a really, really good, and in your case, a super PA, but it also takes effort for uh, the person who's being served to work with that PA. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you don't want to work your PA uh, because you got Adola, you know. Uh, I, I don't want her to look like a, my servant or my <laughs> slave. Um, of course, if you think like that and if the other side also thinks like that, then of course, I don't think it will be a great relationship. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not your slave, okay? Get your own water. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's got to be worked out. It's yeah. got to be uh, that one party doesn't take it as a pride or like, you know, let's just work her uh, to the bone and don't care. Uh, you know, you got you got to show enough care as well. It's, always, always, it's both ways. Uh, but I also know people who have PAs and even secondaries who like, don't want to give anything to the PA to do. Don't want to give anything to say like, like no lah, you know I can. And 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 what happens is that you're not going to benefit from that blessing of that person in your yeah. life uh, if you're going to continue to do things yourself uh, and uh, you know just uh, take on the inconvenience and take on the discomfort because then the other person who's supposed to serve you go like then first of all what do I do yeah. and two you know why do you still go through so much of inconvenience and, and discomfort. Can't help yeah. you. And then you're sweating as you're going into the interview and then no tissue, no nothing and then you're looking bad on the camera uh, and whose fault is it? Right? Uh, so uh, really, uh, I must say it's, it's two ways. Mm. It's got to be uh, the PA knowing exactly what he or she is called to do and also the person who is being served uh, know how to yeah. work that relationship out so that it's, it's a blessing both ways and also the job gets done, the calling yes. uh, gets done uh, and done well. Yes. So I think that is the real goal. The goal is to release each other into our calling mm. uh, and we can only get better at mm. this. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, uh, for tuning in uh, to this episode uh, of uh, Chin Up Show. I'm so glad you could join us uh, today. Uh, as usual, I want to tell you uh, that you uh, could subscribe uh, to this uh, channel. You could leave a comment 
uh, we would love to hear from you. So do reach out to us on all major platforms. And um, we'll see you again. Uh, stay inspired. Uh, stay positive. Stay healthy. Be happy. Always keep that chin up. <laughs>